going on guys welcome back to the channel a little bit of a uh, different type of update real quick video um, today um, I want to preface this by saying this wasn't exactly the uh, video that I was planning on making um, I actually recorded this a uh, an update earlier today and ended up being a pretty long-winded video um, and I checked the camera after the fact and it was like 40 minutes So I'm gonna have to go through that and see either you're gonna see this shorter video or the longer one depending if I uh, Think it's worthy of putting out, but basically um, I just want to do a quick update on the spin numbers and using the metallic dots and whatnot um, Long story short and I'm gonna keep it even shorter because it's starting to sprinkle out here and starting to rain So I don't want to get wet, but um, basically yesterday I came out and I was planning on making a, uh, an update video explaining how I'm making the switch over to the metallic dots on the balls um, for the R10 to be able to actually read and measure the spin versus estimate it. Um, I came out and my initial plan from what I've seen in the past, I didn't do a super in-depth testing of it. So I wanted to just make sure from what I experienced a few different times where I've tried them out, um, I had planned on showing you guys what the regular yards they used to see me hitting with the no dots at the 5300 feet altitude 65 percent humidity and then 85 degrees and then i was going to go and show um, with now the dots how i've found on some of the times when i've tested i've been able to actually decrease the altitude because the the spin readings are more ac accurate and i get the same yardages but unfortunately after about two hours and close to 200 different uh nine iron shots um that's not the case. So, um, this is just an update telling you that I haven't had very good luck. Um, I was hoping to switch over to those metallic dots, but um, for the foreseeable future, until at least maybe Garmin puts out a new update or maybe I get some new tape, I'm going to be sticking with just uh, those settings that I mentioned and uh, these Callaway balls with, uh, with no dots on them. Basically what happened was, um, and I didn't realize it too, I put a pinned comment in the Rockstar Golf Marsh View. Um, video that one I had issues with the wind anyways but on top of it I didn't realize it until yesterday when I did more of an in-depth testing that um, I didn't I was so frustrated I didn't even put anything on camera but um, basically what happened both in that video which I realized now and then yesterday confirmed it um, with the metallic dots that I'm using I'll show you guys um, I came out here I bought a case of each of these Callaway balls brand new case of balls just specifically to use them and for the testing um, I did came out here to show which one and kind of test which one would be better the ball with just one dot on it and then also a ball with uh, the two dots I've had some success but I was getting so frustrated yesterday and such mixed results I actually grabbed I didn't know if it was maybe the color of the ball or whatnot but I grabbed extra balls and also put one and two dots on these and um, it was unfortunately the same case to where um, the R10 over the course of 100, 200, 150 shots, whatever I hit, um, I added it up. It was, I think, close to 209 irons. Um, basically, the story is that the R10, although it does measure and actually pick up the spin with the dots, sometimes it was only about 50% of the time. So that means when I lower the altitude and um, it actually does read, things were pretty good. They were still a little bit short, but they were in the ballpark of what I would expect my yardages to be, which was good. But the problem is when I go and lower those now, um, on the times that it didn't pick up, I was right back into the boat of having clubs be 10 to 20 yards short, which if you guys could see again, I didn't realize it at the time, but um, some of those shots in that Rockstar golf for the par three, um, things were coming up pretty laughably and uh, noticeably short, which I now realize what the case was that, again, um, the ones that I felt like were pretty good, the R10 was actually reading the spin and uh, putting that into the calculation of the yardage, and then the other times it was still doing the estimated spin, which was leaving me um, anywhere from 10 to 20 yards short, which is basically a club or two, which is pretty frustrating. So um, I'll show you guys. Again, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. I know some people have had really good experiences with the RCT balls um, and also the tape. Mainly from what I've seen, it's been indoors, um, which has seemed to be the biggest improvement because I know the R10 has a little bit tougher time, but outside for where I am, I'm pretty happy with the, the readings that I get. I'm not huge, huge into the analytics. I'm, of course, it's important, but I'm not a super high spin player anyways. So for me, um, I'm more concerned about hitting the actual total distances that I see on course. So um, it's possible that I don't have the exactly right tape. I didn't buy this tape. I actually had it. But as you can see, I mean, it's metallic. I don't know if it's uh, aluminum. I'm assuming it's some type of metal. But this type of tape is called 
CW, which I'm assuming stands for Cold Weather Formula, I think is the brand, and then um, Venture Tape. So it says VentureTape.com. I don't know if that's the brand and it's Cold Weather Formula Tape or if it's Cold Weather uh, Formula and then Venture Brand is the tape. Either way, this is the tape that you just saw on the, on the, on the balls. Um, I did tape up some other balls with strips all the way around and I also tried out the uh, the Y shape but I wasn't a huge fan of that one it takes a lot of time to put those on every single ball they're using so if you have friends and family come over um, you're not going to most likely take the time to do that anyways plus for me even doing it back here is kind of frustrating the dots seem to be easier to put on and they held up better and then on top of that with the dots um, I experimented both like I said with one dot and two dots um, I tried everything from having the dots facing up, having them facing completely forward towards the target, somewhere in between. Same thing with the two dots, and then again with the different colored balls to see if that made a difference, and unfortunately it didn't. So, uh, moral of the story for me is out here, I'm better off just with the, the no dots and continue what I'm doing. It's easier that way anyways, and it's preferable. Um, in that case, it's uh, with the no dots, I'm able to do the simula similar uh, type of just put the ball down and play it like I would on course so I think all in all I get more longevity out of the balls I'm not going to crack them as much as I was before um, with obviously that's what, another reason why I went with the dots compared to the strips or the uh, um, the Y shape when I'm able to put the ball down I can basically have all this surface area to hit the ball in a different spot versus if you have the strips or the Y shape you're hitting the ball constantly in the same exact spot which obviously is going to degrade and uh, make you switch the balls out quicker and quicker, which a lot of reason why people um, are fans of the RCT, but um, I don't spend the money and I don't play Pro V1s on course anyways, so for me to spend the money on RCTs, which I wasn't enthusiastic about anyways because they're relatively expensive, um, just in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to play the RCT Pro V1s or even the AVXs out here when I'm not using that, and that's not my preferred ball anyways, so um, it would have to be the dots, but um, from the readings that I'm getting, I just overall get more accurate readings without the dots and keeping my settings to where I've, uh, over the course of the past few months, dialed them into where um, I'm happy with, generally speaking, about 90-90% of the time of the readings that I get. Of course, you're going to have misreads, but um, what I was experiencing with the R10, it doesn't show the club face data most of the time when you have the metallic dots. Again, only picks up the spin and uh, actually measures it half the time, and then on top of it, um, when I was using the dots, there was a good amount of more just complete misreads where the R10 didn't pick it up at all. So, um, all things considered, for me, um, going forward, I'm going to be going no dots unless, again, you guys let me know in the comments if I did something wrong or maybe Garmin puts out an update um, for the R10 unit itself to uh, kind of improve or fix things. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Um, this should be a little bit longer video. Again, this is probably even longer than I wanted it to be in the first place. Um, I kind of want to get out as much information and be as transparent as possible with what I'm doing and what I find best. Um, I was so frustrated yesterday and was kind of perplexed about the results that I got out here after planning on doing one thing and basically going back to uh, just not changing things and being better off that way. But I took a deeper dive into some of the online forums and the Garmin groups on Facebook. And um, believe it or not, there were a good amount of people saying that they actually have better, more accurate readings without the dots. Um, it's not everyone, and I think it was basically uh, just a uh, wide um, belief that when Garmin did the update that everyone would be better off to uh, use the dots. But so far, as of right now, I'm going to put this video out um, either today or tomorrow, so this is real time. As of right now, that's not the case for me out here, um, and it's not worth the frustration trying to tinker with things and uh, mess with settings that I think are already pretty dialed in, in my opinion. So, um, again, let me know in the comments. A few of you were asking what the thoughts were. Um, I have videos in the, that I've already recorded that are going to be coming out in the future to where um, you may hear me talk about the dots, thinking about switching to them, but um, those were recorded before now, and I've basically made the decision to um, just stick with no dots and do what I'm doing. So um, that's my update. Maybe things will change if they again do an update. I'll put out another video, but um, let me know based on your setup not only where you're located, which I've said in the past I believe has uh, a good amount to do with how much people need to adjust the altitude. I've been one of those people from the day one where I took the R10 out of the box. It's been short on yardage. Um, I've been able to, luckily, uh, Garmin listened to us and gave us the option to 
adjust the altitude, but I think not only, like I've said, where you're located and your actual altitude and your physical location, I'm at about 300 feet altitude, which is relatively pretty close to uh, sea level. So I need to bump it up a good amount to, again, 5,300 out here. I've heard other people in red online that people need to go all the way up to like 10,000 and they still feel it's a little bit short. Other people, I'd assume if you're located somewhere in like Colorado where the altitude's already pretty high, you don't have to do it as much. Um, but I'd be curious your thoughts. If you have made the switch, why you made the switch, um, what balls you're using, if you spent the money on the RCTs, how it's working out for you, what percentage of the uh, actual shots pick it up. Um, again, I um, was going in and trying to look. It's kind of hard to decipher. Basically, it's the uh, italics versus the regular bold numbers within the metrics. And from what I could tell, I was hoping to be out here. And in order for me to switch, I would have to have close to 90, 90% of the time um, the R10 actually picking up the spin, which just wasn't the case. It was it would be generous to say 75% of the time, but realistically, it was about half the time. There would be a stretch where it would pick up three or four in a row if I was lucky, and then it would go back to missing two in a row, and then back to basically every other shot it wouldn't pick up. So that's my update. Um, hopefully, it's informative. Hopefully. Maybe you guys have better success, and again, if I'm doing something wrong or you have any tips or suggestions of things I could change in the future, let me know. But um, I appreciate you guys tuning in, and I'll see you guys in the next video.